Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Love Fruit Podcast. My name is Ronnie, and I'm joined by another guest, a friend of mine that I've got to spend some time with this year. Uh, someone I've seen around at various different places and events and festivals and different things, and that's uh, Richard Arsenault. And Richard is the host of a podcast called All About Feeling Good podcast, and also he is uh, uh, he has an Instagram account under the same name, so you can go and follow him there. Uh, I met Richard at the Canada Fruit Fest, uh, saw him at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. He's from Prince Edward Island, Canada. And then by pure coincidence, last year, uh, we were we were in Rome at the same time and we ended up meeting up in Rome. <laughs> we, we went to the Coliseum together on my birthday. Uh, and yeah, Richard, so anything else you want the listeners and viewers to know about you? Yeah, no, uh, you pretty much covered it all. Um... Other than that, just, you know, grew up in a small town and uh, always been pretty active and just uh, worked in the west of Canada for a good decade there, starting in 2007 and then came back home around the end of 2018 to pursue a different path because working in construction wasn't always something I wanted to do for a living. So other than that, then I just, you know, started working on on myself and uh, started the podcast, doing some vegan activism, and, and then, uh, you know, just growing from there, of course, and uh, basically uh, expanded from, from vegan into a little bit more of raw vegan, and, uh, and here we are now. That's excellent. Thank, thanks for the little bit more information. And what, like, what is your story? I mean, I'm guessing that you weren't brought up on a vegan or fruit-based diet, uh, but how how did you make that make that shift and end up in this direction? Yeah, so yeah, I just grew up pretty much regular uh, diet, you know, uh, meat and potatoes, like everybody wants to say. Uh, I always. Um, Grew up eating pretty much home cooked meals. Uh, I'm lucky that my parents and my mom always cooked and we didn't go out too much. We didn't really eat too much fast food. So it was, it was fairly healthy. Um, I live on an island, so there's a lot of fishing. So there was uh, always a lot of fish involved in the diet. But eventually when I moved out and lived on my own for quite a few years, uh, I was with somebody at the time and, uh, she wanted me to watch a documentary. Uh, that one was called food choices on uh, Netflix. And, uh, I had started going to the gym, you know, taking in, uh, protein powders and stuff like that. And so she was concerned about my protein amount, especially having watched a documentary and uh, so she wanted me to watch it. So we ended up watching it one night. And after the documentary was done, I basically turned to her and I said, like, you want to go vegan? She was like totally in for it. So since that day, basically, you know, we went vegan. I think we finished the few odd things that were in the fridge, in the covers. And then after that, we just never looked back and it, it was fairly easy for me. I mean, I always looked for um, ways to be healthier and I always, you know, thought I was a pretty healthy person. I would try to avoid, you know, fast foods and junk foods and stuff, but just like everybody else, you always end up um, eating some of it here and there. But yeah, sure. after that, I basically went vegan and would just eat anything vegan and uh yeah and then like a year and a half after which would have been the start of 2018 i started hearing more about the uh fruit-based diet and the raw raw vegan diet and so that's kind of how I, I learned about it and then going to the canada fruit festival which i found out um early 2018 I was like oh what's this about and it seemed very interesting and I was close by because I was working in, in Alberta and it was in British Columbia so 
yeah, I just jumped into it and uh, went there and just learned even more about it. And it just made even more sense. You know, it was just like going into veganism was basically uh, was the same, right? I watched a documentary and for me, it flicked a switch in my head. It just made so much sense to go vegan. So, you know, I made that switch and it, it was easy. It's different for everybody, but f for me, that's just how it, it ended up. And it was kind of the same deal with going to the Canada Fruit Festival and learning more about raw veganism was uh, it just made uh, sense. And it seemed like uh, something that was more of a, on the side of living a healthier lifestyle. So that's kind of where I'm at now. And uh, I try to do more at least 90% raw and still um, trying to get to a hundred percent is the goal, but you know, you can't just push yourself too much because that's when you, sure. uh, you might fail. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and did you have any health challenges? Was there anything in particular that attracted you towards trying a healthier type of vegan diet? Was there anything in particular or was it just, you know, the next step for you? Yeah. Yeah. It was, I think it was just the next step. I never really had any health problems that I know of. Um, pretty much, I just seen it as something that would possibly give me more energy, uh, would uh, just help my overall health, and uh, you know, give you a little bit more uh, clarity. And um, yeah, so yeah, like I said, I didn't have any health issues that I know of. I was fairly healthy and active and uh, it just made sense. It looked like something that was healthier and I like the, the simplicity behind it. That's another big reason why I kind of moved towards that because sure. there's just, we have so many different foods. You go to the grocery store and it's just aisle upon aisle of stuff. And it's like, we really don't need all that stuff. Like yeah, it's sure. just excessive amounts of things and like, you know, like there's no way that uh, us as humans, we need that many choices. And nowadays we have the most choices um, ever. And I think it just causes more confusion and and we're just kind of all over the place with it. And yeah, so I think raw vegan, especially, and then also raw vegan was just making it more, more uh, simplified. And yeah, that's kind of the main reason I moved towards it all also right so sure sure and uh, did you have any anyone in particular that kind of inspired you or that it was there any particular information you were following or YouTube channels or books or anything that kind of made you inspired you yeah um, I hadn't read any books but I was watching a little bit of YouTube especially after um, finding out with the Canada Fruit Festival um, and finding about the people that were involved in it, like Ted Carr, and uh, and then later finding out about uh, uh, Melissa Raimondi, which is Melissa Maris now, and just everybody, all the influencers involved there, and Johnny Juicer, and um, everybody that was uh, part of the, the movement and was uh, aiming more for a, a raw... Uh, lifestyle was definitely the people that helped me but just just the community there's a big community behind it and I think mainly it's just a, collectively everybody that that is part of it it was showing me that there's so many people that are doing it and um, they're living a very healthy lifestyle and you know healing themselves from different illnesses or disease possibly or anything at all and it just to me it's that's enough for for me to move in that direction because you know there's a good group of people doing it and that gives me the motivation to uh, to um, look in that direction anyways so so was was Canada Fruit Fest actually one of the first things that you kind of heard about this kind of lifestyle from was it just from seeing things online about it and stuff yeah, yeah, because the 2000, start of 2018, I think it's around that time where I started incorporating more fruits in my diet because I, I, right. I don't know exactly, but I think because 
the tickets came up for sale and I seen a post on it on my Instagram and I was like, Hey, what, what is this? This sounds interesting. You know, they're all vegans and then they're all like raw vegans on top of that. And I think I looked a little bit more into it. Like maybe looked into who Ted Carr was. And, um, I think I knew who Ted Carr was before that a little bit, but, and, um, anyways, going into it. Yeah. I just started incorporating more fruits and yeah, especially going to the Canada Fruit Fest was definitely a big, um, a big head start in the, in the raw vegan movement because uh, everybody was there and, <laughs> you know, you, you just, you're living it with everybody else. So it was a big indicator that, you know, this is working for a lot of people and, and I like it, you know, and the community is just so loving and, and so passionate and there's just so many, um, so many people giving out so much good information on so many different topics and yeah there's so much to learn there so i definitely from the canada fruit fest is definitely where i started moving in that direction even more yeah that was so that was quite an interesting first year at the canada fruit fest. what were you, some of your memories from it oh just the <laughs> the energy is very high there the energy is definitely high and um there's just so much love. Everybody is just, yeah, you know, there's so many people that you have never met or never talked to or anything, but you meet them and within a couple minutes, you're, you feel like you're friends, best friends already. And uh, you can talk to anybody about anything. Everybody is just so understanding and uh, everybody is so caring. And yeah, it's just, the community, it just builds a community and, and like a, a, a very like family feeling to it. And I think so that's the, the main things for me. The thing, one of the things I remember about the first year was the storm that happened. So, sorry, what was that? One of the things I remembered about the first year was this, the, the storm that happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, was your, what was your memory of that? Well, you know, we were all uh, a little bit uh, <laughs> panicking, but at the same time, it wasn't that bad. We we're just like, where can we hide from this, you know, horrible rainfall? And uh, at the same time, we were all laughing and having fun. And some people were running in the rain and, you know, dancing and, and whatnot. And maybe the rest of us were running after our tents that were flying away or our stuff that were getting soaked. But... Other than that, we, you know, kind of collectively all came together in the big tent and and uh, tried to hide from it. So, yeah, it was fun. It was uh, it was different. <laughs> um, and you went? Did you go to Woodstock that year, or was it was it the next year you went to both of them? Yeah, yeah. Next year I went to both of them. I didn't. I don't think I knew about Woodstock until I was at sure. the Canada Fruit Fest. And then by then it was too late and, you know, I had other plans and stuff. So, sure. but yeah, I didn't, after finding out about the Woodstock Fruit Festival, I was like, I, there's no way I can't go next year. I'm definitely buying tickets and, and going for sure. Cause it sounds pretty, pretty fun, especially it being longer and having more people and so many things to do there as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, on your sort of journey, I mean, what what have been some of the things that you um, that you would kind of recommend to other people in the way that you've kind of moved towards a vegan diet, then to a more raw vegan diet? <clears throat> what are the things that you've learned about that process? Yeah, um, well, I guess starting with just going into a vegan lifestyle. I mean, you just get to educate yourself as much as you can, find whatever information uh, you can, learn about it, um, find people that are living that lifestyle is one of the biggest things. And then you can find some motivation, some inspiration from these people um, and reach out to people, ask questions and um, if you're somebody that feels that you can jump right into it, then then go for it. Um, but 
I think for most people, it's a little bit hard to go, you know, uh, straight into it. Um, sure. Cold turkey, like they would say. And uh, so just make gradual switches, you know, try to do one vegan meal a day um, and, and just gradually progress from there. But yeah, just basically all the information you can take in and uh, learning from others that are doing it and just join into communities. There's plenty of people on Instagram. There's plenty of Facebook groups as well. Uh, there's plenty of documentaries on Netflix and YouTube. And, and then from there, um, it's kind of the same for, for going raw. It's just, uh, you know, trying to introduce more fruits, seeing how you're listening to your body as well. You know, you don't want to push your body too much. Um, you want to try different things, um, and see how your body reacts to it. And yeah, just basically, um, same thing, just learn about people that are living the raw vegan lifestyle or, you know, into fruitarianism and, uh, try it for yourself. That is the biggest thing is just trying it. And, uh, yeah. So you start sharing uh, stuff about your own journey, I guess, and uh, your, your Instagram, but you've also got the podcast. So tell us about that. When did all that start? And mm -hmm. uh, what, what's what's your aim or what, what are you trying to do with your podcast? Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I started it, it would have been fall of 2018. And yeah, I just like... You know, there's there's not that many vegan podcasts out there. Like it's it's still kind of starting. There's more and more all the time, but I just couldn't find. I think my main idea is just I couldn't find any other podcast that would just interview anyone and just sharing their story of going vegan and how they stay vegan and tips and advice on on going vegan and all that stuff. Just you know, there's a lot out there that's, uh, they're sharing, um, or they're talking and interviewing people like doctors and, and other influencers and stuff like that. And so I figured, you know, it, it sounded interesting. I wanted to meet other vegans is the other thing I wanted to see, you know, at, at first it kind of started with, um, I wanted to meet vegans from from my island where i'm from and i wanted to interview all of them as much as i could and and reach out to people and try to you know just bring stories on and so that more people could relate because these are just it's just anybody that is vegan and you know is interested in sharing their story because everybody's story is so different and there's little bits here and there from everybody's story that can impact somebody and somebody else can relate to it so you know it started off as i wanted to reach out to all the vegans uh that were local or that were on in my province and then eventually i was like well you know i have to expand from there and yeah it's just been really fun to reach out and get people reach out to me asking if they could come on the podcast and it just feels good that it, it just kind of builds a community there and um, they get to come on, share their story. And yeah, the aim is just to basically have as many stories from vegans on there so that more people can, can relate, more people can find uh, similar stories or similar backgrounds to themselves and maybe uh, they'll get curious into moving into a plant-based lifestyle and uh, they can find advice from these people there and, you know, maybe struggles or doubts or anything they've been through or any types of uh, illnesses or diseases or any uh, physical or mental changes they've seen. And yeah, it's just been really fun to, um, video chat and talk to people and just meet these people because now it, it just builds like a bit of a friendship that way you know and 
yeah, there's just so many people out there and I just want everybody to just come in and, and share their stories. And it just shows how many people are out there. It's not just doctors or, or big sure. activists or, or anybody that's, you know, that you, you hear from. It's just your regular day to day. Yeah. Vegan. Anybody, anybody really can come on and, and share their story. It's kind of funny because a lot of the people that are some of the best examples of doing a vegan or a raw vegan diet, especially in a healthier way, are often people that no one's ever heard of and uh, not mm -hmm. necessarily influencers or people that share their life out there. Uh, yeah. People that just do it for themselves, really, or just for sure. Um, so you did, you did quite a lot of travel this year. And, like, where, where did you, how did you end up doing that? What, what made you decide to do that? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I always felt like traveling. Um, like I said, I love meeting people. I love uh, making new connections, new friends. And, I mean, traveling to different places and trying out different new fruits is always something I want to do. And, um, yeah, once you uh, – I felt like once I was part of the, the vegan community and the raw vegan community, a lot of people travel, and there's a lot of uh, inspiration to go explore different places in the world. And, and not only that is – we all know that traveling expands your mind. It opens up new doors. Sure. It, it helps you like understand different perspectives and just, just see different things that you've never seen before and uh, can just help you become a different person, a better person, you know? So yeah, I got inspired. I always wanted to travel and took the advantage after I had sold my house last spring you know, I had money from it. I said, well, you know, here's the time to go traveling. I'm not working and I have some money. So I, I, I want to go, I want to go do it now before it's, it's too late. And yeah. so I went out there and uh, kind of planned a bit of a trip. A lot of different things happened. It was only supposed to be for, for a month with a different friend. And then that fell through right before I left. And then I ended up go going to London anyways. And, it ended up even better because I ended up with some really good friends that were in the same um, community and mindset and we hung out and then, yeah. And then I just contacted a bunch of people that I knew that I had met in the past through Instagram, Facebook, and they were through Europe. So I just was kind of hopping around, visiting these people, staying with them for a little bit. And they were showing me around and yeah, I just created a way longer trip that ended up to be three and a half months and like you said earlier we we I happened to wanted to go to Rome for three days and then I put it out on Instagram and you guys said we're gonna be there as well so I was like <laughs> nice that's awesome so yeah we hung out there for for those three days and and then I went off and kept going and yeah I just made so many friends and new connections it's I don't know it just feels really good to to meet people and, you know, and uh, hear about their story and just learn more about where you had a, did, different did you, find, did you find it relatively easy to find fruit everywhere you went? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty easy. There's, I mean, it all depends where you go, I guess, but for the places I was, you know, there's a lot of uh, major cities and, and bigger places, but I mean, you could find fruits in any supermarket so sure. sometimes it can be a little bit tougher depending on the prices and, and the quality or, or what they have. But I mean, for the most part, yeah, it was fairly easy. Was it yeah. any, any highlights for you in terms of the, the produce in any particular place? Uh, yeah. Um, for the most part, I think Spain was pretty good, but I, Morocco was, was definitely my favorite spot spot for for fruits and, and vegetables especially they have loads of it in the markets and uh you you know we had a hostel and you'd walk down the alley and as soon as you got to the first street there's just markets full of fruits and vegetables the prices are really good the quality is really good because most of those places 
you know, they come straight from the farm. They're a bunch of little small farmers and, you know, nothing is generally sprayed and stuff like that. It's, it's mostly all organic food. And like I said, yeah, the prices are really good and it tastes amazing. I've had like the best cucumbers there. That's definitely one thing that I remember is the wow, cucumbers yeah. were so fresh and so good. And they were at a really good price. Like it was almost sad to come back home after because, you know, you find like kind of a, a shitty little English cucumber for like a dollar and a half upwards of maybe sometimes two and a half dollars for one cucumber. Sure. When out there you can get like these nice, fresh um, cucumbers and you can get like seven of them for, for like a dollar. So, you know. But the oranges and, and all the fruits there were good. Some fruits like mangoes were really good too. Um, but uh, yeah, sometimes you had to hunt for, for different fruits like sure. uh, melons and stuff like that. But yeah. So Morocco, that. Morocco, is, Morocco is a place to check out for fruit and vegetables then? Yeah, yeah. Morocco is definitely good. It was uh, the place that we were that we really liked. Um, we pretty much kind of explored more or less the, the, the south part of uh, Morocco, um, going from uh, I landed in Marrakesh. We went to and, and followed the, the coast uh, towns and little cities there on, on the coastline. And uh, where we were was called Esuera. And that was, that was definitely... Um, one of the top places for us because we went there and uh, went to visit a few other small places and then we came back because we were like let's just finish our last week there because I don't know to us it was the our favorite place that we visited in Morocco and it had a lot of really good selections of fruits and vegetables in the market so sure so yeah what, what, what are you what are you planning next what are you doing at the moment and what are your plans for coming up this year yeah well um so far i am just you know taking this time you know we have a a lot of downtime here not working and stuff with the virus and that but just taking time to myself you know trying to do a lot of uh movement yoga meditation um uh, journaling, just a lot of things for self-improvement and uh, also brain brainstorming a few little business ideas, you know, just kind of going through, trying to really figure out what my passion is and what I really want to focus on and what I want to help people with. And, um, but other than that, you know, I was hoping to go to the can of fruit festival that, that seems like it got canceled. Uh, I got a trip in July for, for a wedding, my first wedding there in, in Alberta. So hopefully that's going to still go on. And then hopefully the Woodstock Fruit Festival is still going to be going as well because I, I got tickets to there. So I, I can't wait. I mean, Excellent. once it's over, you just want to, you just can't wait for the next year to go. But uh, this, this winter, if plans go right, I do want to go either explore uh, Thailand, uh, Bali or, or places like that and just uh, spend at least a month out there to nice. just relax and, and enjoy some really good tropical fruits like especially like durian <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely yeah. one of my favorites and uh, yeah so possibly Thailand if not maybe South America somewhere as I got friends in quite a few different places and so I just want to go visit people and, and go somewhere out there for, for some traveling. So if people want to follow you and learn more about what you're doing and, uh, you, you know, get in touch with you and so on, how, how can they do that? Yeah, for sure. Well, I, like you said at the start, I'm on Instagram. It's just at allabout.feeling.good. And I also have a YouTube channel, still working on it. I got some videos on there. Um, and uh, that is also all about feeling good um, on YouTube. It should come up for you. And uh, everything that I post on Instagram is basically posted on Facebook as well. But Facebook is just my name, Richard 
Arsenal. And um, same profile picture as Instagram. So if you find me on Instagram, you can probably find me on Facebook as well. And um, also have the podcast, All About Feeling Good podcast, which is uh, also a Facebook page. And from there, you can find the links. It's also posted on um, Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google uh, Podcasts, and Stitcher. And um, there's also my website link. It, all the links are in my Instagram page under my link tree there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's posted on plenty other, um, plenty other podcast platforms, mostly mostly anyone that uh, you guys would listen to it, it's going to be there and uh yeah other than that that's uh that's where you can find me <laughs> excellent excellent so uh all about feeling good podcast if anyone wants to find out and maybe maybe some people feel like um you might be that they might be a good pair of fit for your podcast how, how could they get in touch with you if they wanted to be interviewed for it yeah, for sure. You can just send me a DM on Instagram or you, if you can find my uh, All About Feeling Good podcast page on Facebook, there's also a scheduler there. You can schedule yourself in if you'd like or just private message me and we can just kind of go back and forth and figure out a good time that fits for both of us. But like I said, there's a scheduler there so you can just throw in your name and, and time that fits good for you and... Uh, if it doesn't work for me, then I guess I'll, I'll let you know. But yeah, it's it's all on there. Just uh, just give me a shout. <laughs> and do you have any uh, words of advice just before we before we finish up today? Yeah. Well, um, I guess final advice would be just try it for yourself. You know, if you feel like you want to make some changes in your life and uh, you want to be healthier, you want to feel better, just uh, find the information, learn about it, and just try it because there's no harm in trying. And if you don't try, you will you won't know. So I yeah. think it's just gather, in, gather the information and give it a go and see how you feel. And, uh, you know, give it an honest try, not just one day, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, try it for a good couple of weeks, a month if you have to, and just, you know, find whatever you got to do to find some inspiration and motivation, and uh, you'll find yourself at, in a better place. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Richard, and uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. And if you want to learn more about what Richard's doing, then check out the All About Feeling Good podcast. And uh, you can follow him on, on Instagram, All About Feeling Good. Uh, thanks for spending some time with us today, Richard. And we hope to, we I hope that a lot of people listening are going to maybe see us at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. And if anyone's interested in a fruit festival in the UK as well, you can go to fruitfest.co.uk to learn more about that. Uh, but thanks for joining us today, Richard. And uh, for everyone listening and watching, we'll see you in the next episode of the Lockwood Podcast. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.